wishing that one day you listen so we can connect again I'm feeling the purpose, I know we're not perfect But my soul is reaching out I'm gonna hand you the truth, hand you the truth I ain't got a calling card I just picked this up right now. So I got the uh, new 2023 MacBook Pro. It's the 14 inch model. And uh, if you guys watched my channel before, everything I've been doing programming on and editing videos with, I had the 2019 13 inch MacBook Pro and it was still the Intel chip one. So it was time for an upgrade, especially since I'm doing a lot of 4K video editing. That's why I got this new one with the M2 chip and uh, it should be super fast. And I'll leave in the description everything that I customized on this MacBook so that it can just tailor to my experience here. I do programming and I also edit video, so I had to just kind of customize it a little bit for my taste. But this is my first impression of this 14 inch MacBook Pro. I've always had a 13 inch. I've never had a 16 inch or anything. And so really this is, this is a lot thicker and heavier. Uh, even though I can't really tell the difference between a 13 and 14 inch, they just they look the same in size, but this is a lot bulkier. My 2019 model, it was so slim. And so, yeah, that's the difference with it. I, I noticed these fans back here too, a little bit different like that. The ports here, uh, USB-C has the uh, 3.5 millimeter uh, audio plug still, which I love. I still use that. Has the SD chip here. HDMI and uh, I do like that it has uh, USB-C ports on both sides because I really utilize that. If you stay till the end I'm going to talk about how I saved a lot of money on getting this new MacBook, the new 2023 MacBook that I don't think a lot of people realize how to save money to do it because Apple never gives you discounts but I did use a method to get it for cheaper and it saved me a lot of money. So stick till the end on that and I'll give you more details on this MacBook. But uh, this is, yeah, this is my first impression. Like I said, it's it's a lot heavier uh, and bulkier. And then look at this right here. I do like this new power plug because the previous one had that long cable and it was such a hassle to bring that around. So they give me this longer USB-C <laughs> cable right here, which I like and I like this material right here, this braided type of material, it feels a lot better. They did change this around. This part right here is USB-C, but this is the MagSafe, and it's a different type of plug. See, they went back to the old model plug for that. And I actually like the USB-C a lot, mainly because I use a lot of USB-C cables, and I did like that long cable. Uh, sometimes I might wanna take it out, switch it, and use it for something else, but now I can't because this is only for the MacBook. I did a trade-in on my 2019 MacBook, and actually when you do a trade-in you can keep the power cable I don't think a lot of people know that all you have to do is just return your MacBook but you can keep the accessories so I could have kept the power cable on that um, <laughs> that's the difference right here right the MacBook got bulkier and the power cord here got slimmer <laughs> so that's the funny thing okay so I'm gonna boot this up for the very first time here let's open it up just a little protection right here take that off There we go, look at that. Hello, get started. So uh, let me step through this right here. Select your region, United States. All right, so I'm just gonna step through my whole process right here. I do notice right here too, uh, I like this right here, you know, with the little camera notch <laughs> thing right here. It gives you a little bit more screen space because uh, the older model, it did 
you know, they cropped it down a little bit. <clears throat> One thing that I forgot that this new model doesn't have is the touch bar. I really missed that. I really loved my touch bar on the 2019. And so, yeah, uh, the keyboard feels good. And also the touch bar had the finger scanner right next to it that was very flat. But now it's, it's more of a button right here. Uh, I love the touch bar. I don't know. It, um... Mainly because when I do video editing, it changes with the app that I use, you know, so Chrome, video editing, even using emojis, the the touch bar was very useful and I, I used it all the time. So yeah, I'm going to really miss that touch bar. So yeah, let's install VS Code and we're going to check this out. Pretty simple. And what I like about VS Code is that I can just have a terminal in here. There we go pop up my terminal and then I can do homebrew in here so let's go to homebrew copy this go back to terminal paste it in and there we go we're installing homebrew now so yeah look it's downloading command line tools for Xcode because it needs some of that command line tools for Visual Studio Code and I'm going to install Node after this as well but yeah I really like this keyboard it feels very nice to type in uh, the 2019 model keyboard it was very flat it took a uh, quite a bit of time to get used to for a lot of people I got used to it pretty fast and I liked it actually but this uh, keyboard now feels a lot like the older model of the MacBook how they used to have it and people love that uh, keyboard on it so they went back to that and it you know it feels very good it's like it has a little dip in the keys here but it feels very good to type so what I'm going to do right now is a little bit of video editing. I'm going to do some cinematics here for you to see and I'm going to edit with iMovie and show you the process and how fast it goes. Okay, so I finished the edit. We're gonna see how fast it takes to export it right here. So I'll show you on the screen when I export this. Uh, I made it a minute long, a minute and four seconds. I had to add some extra clips at the end here. And so uh, we're gonna export this as 4K and we're gonna see how long it takes. Well done. All right, here we go. Here's the video. And so it took about a minute, like I said. And, um, you know, if I do a 10 minute video, it's going to take me 10 minutes then, right? Because this is a minute video and it took one minute to export. I just want to mention really quick that this is not a full on review video. If you're watching this for it, I'm just showing as a programmer and a video editor, uh, my new MacBook Pro here, the 14 inch model with the M2 chip. I just want to show you how smooth the, uh, it's running with uh, the programs that I loaded into it. And also I want to show uh, video editing because that's what I do on this channel. I edit 4K videos. And you know, like most people are probably even jumping to 8K video soon. And I know this can support 8K as well. It's really fast. So this is what my impressions of it. While I was exporting this video, uh, one minute long, and a lot of videos that I edit, they are 10 minutes long. So with that, it should only take 10 minutes to export on this MacBook, where before on my 2019, it took me roughly half an hour to export a video and I had to sit through so long. And then this would happen a lot of times too. I know for you editors out there, while I export a video and I wait through it, and then I would rewatch my video that I edit, I would find a mistake. And so I would have to re-export. Saves quite a bit of time. I also noticed that it's super fast. Uh, editing 4k video here while I'm scrubbing through the timeline everything is just super smooth super smooth how I'm cutting things and I'm um, splitting the clips uh, dragging and dropping loading it up uh, one major thing is that I missed the touch bar because while I'm editing videos on my old MacBook I would have the touch bar and it would have the split button for me to split up the clips now I have to do the shortcut which, you know, I, it just takes some time to like memorize that to do the shortcut. It's pretty fast, uh, Command-B. But I was so used to the touch where I can split clips 
I was so used to with the volume and even the emojis when I'm loading my text up and I just scroll through it and all this stuff, you know, so I really missed that touch bar. And so the 13 inch model has it, but they didn't put it for the 14 inch model. And I'm thinking next year they'll update it and put it for the 14 inch model. So should I have waited for the touch bar? Well, I was getting really annoyed with my 2019, how slow it was getting. It was, it was just like lagging a lot, even scrubbing through the clips. And so I just wanted to upgrade, you know, if you're a full on programmer, you don't do video editing. You do not need this powerful as a MacBook because uh, you can just program with very old models of MacBooks. Uh, it doesn't take a lot of processing unless you are a 3D editor or video game um, programmer. Then you would need a fast one like this, the M2 Pro. So I think this is a great MacBook for me right now. And usually when I get MacBooks, I don't upgrade for like another five years or so. Like I said, the last one I had was that 2019 and I just didn't feel the need to upgrade anytime soon after that. If you stay till the end of the video here and you want to hear how I save money on buying this new MacBook Pro 2023 model, the 14 inch model with the M2 Pro chip, I used Apple Pay and they have a plan on there where you can either do payments or you can pay for the whole thing and you get 3% back and it was a lot instantly when I bought it. I did payments on it for uh, the next 12 months. It comes out to roughly 200 or so, 200 something uh, per month but it gave me $84 back instantly. And then on top of that, I went through their trade-in option. They allow you to trade in your old MacBook. And uh, if you go through the uh, process of buying it, you'll see a link that says, check how much you can get for your trade-in. And so I checked up on my 2019 MacBook. It said I can get back $420 for trading it in. And uh, of course I can get a lot more money if I put it on OfferUp or somewhere online to sell it. But I've gone through selling a lot of things on OfferUp and stuff and it's a very big hassle. So I didn't really mind just losing a hundred or, or two, you know? And so 420 was a good amount. And so I traded that in. And so 400 off, including the $84 saved with the 3% cash back on the Apple Pay. It just saved me quite a bit of money with that. I got it right away. I traded in the MacBook. I went to Apple Store to um, actually pick up my MacBook and trade it in. You can do it online. If you decide to buy it online and have it shipped to you, they would send you a box where you can send back the old MacBook and then they would actually verify it. They go through to see how, you know, if it's not broken, it works. He stepped me through erasing it, which I backed up everything before I brought it into the store for them. And so uh, I just told him, yeah, it's all good to erase. He just pressed the button. It's like, click here and it'll erase everything. It took literally five minutes to uh, just do all that whole process. He gave me my new MacBook and I was done. I walked out with it and went home. Another thing I want to mention is that when you buy this MacBook, it does take roughly two weeks for them to customize it. If you were to do the custom option, which I did, I increased the memory to 32 megabytes, which I think it's pretty good. My old one has 16, so I just doubled it. And then also my SSD drive, I increased that space to one terabyte. My previous one was only 256, it was so low. There you go, that's how I saved money on doing it. Apple Pay, it was quick and easy. And uh, I actually use Apple Pay for almost everything. You wouldn't believe paying for gas and all this, I get 3% back and it's just so much. And it constantly just gives me cash back. So there you go. And I hope you guys enjoyed this new video here. Like I said, I'll do some more future content with this MacBook Pro as I'm programming. Give this a like, help me reach my sub goals, and I'll see you in the next one. Kodakai out. I'm gonna hand you the truth. Hand you the truth.